so we're here at the High Definition booth, uh, makers of PanCut camouflage patterns. This is Lawrence Haltworth. He will present to us uh, a new line of camouflage patterns. So, Lawrence, can you walk us through, please? Sure. Uh, so, um, to my immediate right here, you'll see a mannequin dressed up in our snowdrift version of PenCot. So this yep. is our, our snow camo, obviously. Um, it, with the lightweight polyester shell fabric that was used for the jacket and the uh, and the trousers and the 500 denier cordura which was used for the making of this chest rig uh, and brand new as well our printed webbing mm -hmm. uh, which will be uh, uh, available for sale in about two or three weeks okay. uh, through Texel Industries. Uh, all of the all of the fabrics that we have are made for us. Um, in the U.S., uh, they're printed by Duro Industries, which is one mm -hmm. of the world's leading printers of camouflage fabric. Yep. They print, they print fabrics for the U.S. military, a lot of foreign militaries. They have the uh, exclusive worldwide uh, commercial license for Multicam, so they're mm -hmm. very, um, you know, very knowledgeable, very experienced expert okay. printers. So, you know, basically, what we get there is uh, very, very high quality. In fact. Everything that we produce, all of the fabrics and, and materials that we produce, are uh, U.S. military specifications. So mm -hmm. it's um, you know got the built-in NIR near infrared mm -hmm. reflectance capabilities and everything as well. Um, yeah, um, in addition to the snowdrift pattern, we have also uh, our green zone pattern. Yeah, uh, which was actually the original pen cut, the first pen cut pattern released yep. onto the market. Um, this is obviously um, designed for verdant terrain, so woodland, yep. forest, uh, and tropical jungle, in anything where anywhere mm -hmm. where it's where it's like very green. We have our Badlands pattern, uh, which is the uh, semi-arid slash intermediate. Intermediate, yeah, yep. sort of the, the semi-arid terrain, the mm -hmm. transitional terrain, um, and we have our sandstorm pattern. Mm -hmm. um, don't actually have any uniforms in that pattern on display. But it is, uh, it's this one, which is yep. our, our desert pattern. Yeah. Um, as I said, we have it, we have the patterns available on a number of different fabrics. We have the 50-50 nylon cotton ripstop. Yeah. We have the 500 denier and 1000 denier cordura. We have the lightweight polyester. Uh, we have the printed webbing that I was talking about. Yep. And we have the, uh, the the quiet loop product from uh, Propel, partner a partner of ours. Which so it's is, the uh, silent Velcro, um, so to speak. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's like Velcro. Um, it's hook and loop yeah. fastener. The uh, quiet they call it quiet loop because it is actually about 50% quieter it's not than than, um, than Velcro yeah. or a standard any other sort of standard uh, hook and loop fastener. Is also obviously as you can see printed with the camouflage pattern. Yeah. Um, the other advantage of this product is that it also has the near infrared reflectance uh, uh -huh. performance. So when you're if you're being viewed through a night vision device, yeah. uh, you don't have a huge big square. The, the Shines that, that shines out exactly. So, um, so it blends in with the rest of the uniform. So it blends in because of the camouflage. Yeah. It blends in. Um, you have a reduced uh, signature. oral signature through yeah. the through the uh, the quietness, and um, and obviously then also the the near infrared. Mm -hmm. It was originally Propel originally developed this actually uh, on behalf of U.S. SOCOM, mm -hmm. and it was first used with. Uh, AOR1, AOR2, mm -hmm. and multicam prints for US Special Forces. Yep. Now it's been commercialized. It's available to others. Yeah. Okay. So that, um, that's our, our portfolio, more mm -hmm. or less, as it stands today. And this camouflage patterns were developed by Mr. Dom Hyde, who is Correct. the owner and the CEO. Correct. As far as, uh, as, far so as Dom, I understand. Dom, Dom is the uh, is the founder of the company. He's the uh, obviously also the, the designer of the patterns. Um, and um, yeah, developed the patterns completely on his own initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, began working on them. 
uh, approximately um, around about 2005 is when he first started thinking about designing a new, you know, needing to design a new pattern yeah. and began working on what eventually then became the Pencott pattern. Um, so um, spent, uh, you know, spent about three years in the end uh, working on it off and on. Mm -hmm. he, you know, he was doing it part time, yeah. just on his on off his own uh, initiative, um, and um, you know the result uh, was uh, became the Pencott family of patterns. So, what was the driving force? How did he get to the idea of actually? Okay, did he wake up one day and said, "Hey, I'd like to design a new camel pattern," or mm -hmm. was there something? from his background that led him to that? Right. Um, I think it was a combination of several things. Um, Dom has, has had an interest in camouflage uh, really since he was a, a little boy. Mm -hmm. um, and apparently, you know, he's, he's, he's been sort of tinkering around with camouflage patterns throughout his whole life. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's designed more than 2,000 patterns in, in total now, you know, over the, over the years. Um, and what spurred him on to really get serious and, and you know develop the, what became the Pencott pattern was just noticing you know around about 2005 with the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan mm -hmm. and uh, some of the peacekeeping uh, missions, things like Bosnia yeah. and, and so on, that current military camouflage really wasn't doing the job for the troops where they were operating. Yeah. Um, most of the most Western camouflage patterns, in fact, probably most camo military camouflage patterns anywhere, um, had been designed you know, much earlier. The, the, particularly the NATO countries' um, camouflage patterns had been really designed for that sort of Cold War scenario of you know, putting in defensive, setting up a defensive position in, in woodland terrain or forest terrain. So the patterns tended to be quite dark. Um, they tended to be, you know, oriented towards that sort of European forest yeah, type European environment. Theater. Yeah, um, and you know, the, on the assumption that we'd be fighting in a forest yeah. environment. Um, but you could you could very quickly see when soldiers were you know, outside of that uh, area mm -hmm. that the camouflage was no longer effective. Yeah. Um, you know, if you um, if you put on a set of uh, DPM or US Woodland or Flectarn and go and you know sit in a dark forest mm -hmm. uh, you're fine it'll work pretty good yeah if you come out of that ter if you come out of that forest terrain if you go get into more broken terrain or more open it woodland the, uh, you're too dark the effectiveness, you're, yeah, yeah exactly um, you know you very rapidly see that that camouflage pattern just doesn't work yeah um, it's too dark the sh the pattern shapes are too big so you know in effect it becomes anti camouflage mm -hmm. um, so you know so Dom spent some time looking at this situation researching analyzing the problem thinking about it you know thinking about camouflage from the individual soldiers perspective yeah. you know, where am I going to be um, and particularly noting that again if you're in a m more open environment then you need a camouflage pattern that's going to work in that type of environment yeah. and uh, Made the uh, made the conclusion that if you design a pattern that will work in the more open terrain, that will also work in the in the in the, in the wooded in the, in the wooded terrain, the darker in, in the terrain. darker in yeah. the darker areas. Yeah. Um, in camouflage terms, you talk about it as negative and positive space. Yeah. So a positive space is one with a lot of cover and mm -hmm. natural cover and concealment. Yeah. A negative space is one which which has a lot lim more limited cover and concealment. So if you design for the negative space, it works yeah. in the positive space, but the reverse isn't true. Yeah. So um, so that was you know that that kind of turning the whole thing on its head was where he began, where he started from, and um, you know and, and the and the pattern was the uh, was the eventual the result. result. Yeah. So, from my understanding, uh, Dom and high definition in general is very anti. It's not a proponent of universal camouflage patterns that apparently people really like, but these patterns don't seem to work really well anywhere, but they sort of do okay mm. in most areas. Yeah, so our, our, our philosophy is, um, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't, wouldn't describe it so much as being anti-universal camouflage per se, but it's more that, um, you know, again, our, our position is we're, we want to provide optimum concealment solutions. Yeah. So to get 
the best concealment possible, mm -hmm. you need to have a pattern which is designed for that type of an environment. And, and as you said, um, you know, these so-called universal patterns are at best an 80% solution. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in other words, that they will they will work okay in you know maybe for you know 80% of the location or 80% of the time. Or, you know. They will they will never excel at, in any environment. Yeah, exactly. They'll be okay in most environments, yeah. but never adequate, excellent in any environment. Yeah. Um, and in some environments, in fact, they will be completely uh, counterproductive. Completely counterproductive as well. Exactly. Um, so yeah, so we took the position uh, of saying, well, you know, there's no such thing as universal camouflage because um, you know the, the the world just doesn't look like yeah. that way. Um, so we wanted to provide more, you know, environmentally specific patterns, yeah. so that if you've got the ability to tailor your camouflage to your operating mm -hmm. environment, then you'll have a, a, an optimum solution. Are military switching back to multiple camouflage patterns instead of just one? Because let's say multicam is still very popular, mm -hmm. uh, and militaries around the world try to um, design new patterns that would mimic that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think they're slowly realizing, at least from what I hear, that the best solution is still to have specific camouflage patterns for specific areas of operation. Mm. So you th do you think, in your opinion, because you're more connected to that, let's say, society that it's moving to the trend is moving back towards multiple uh, camouflage patterns mm. and it's um, it's an interesting uh, an interesting thing going on now in, in the in the industry and in um, you know military fashion if you will um, because I mean, really a lot of it is about fashion there's yeah. there's trends and there's popularity yeah, and, you know um, the coolness factor the cool the factor, factor yeah, and still on, dig yeah. It, yeah. Um, it's. I think there's. I think it's uh, still kind of too early to tell. Um, definitely, some militaries have never moved away from mm -hmm. the notion of having a woodland pattern and a desert pattern, um, and others. Others have gone, you know, fully to the one pattern fits them all sort of approach. Um, we, you know, we've seen that with uh, you know things like the British Army adopting mm -hmm. a, a very variation of multicam, the Danish Army adopting multicam. Yep and so on and so forth. Um, so there's, there's still definitely that trend going on. The New Zealand Army has uh, recently decided to go with a multi-terrain, yeah. single multi-terrain pattern as well. Um, and so, yeah, there's definitely still you know, that trend playing out. But at the same time, you have the, uh, the opposite happening, as you, as you said, with, um, you know, with militaries either going back to the idea of mm -hmm. having multiple patterns for yeah. different, you know, so one, uh, excuse me, um, a specific pattern for a specific type of environment. Yeah. Um, like the U.S. Army, of course, is right now, you know, in the um, in the final stages of running through their new family of patterns mm -hmm. uh, program, and, and uh, of which I think you've been trying to to win your portion, or you entered the tender. We we did. We entered the tender. We submitted uh, for that uh, for that program, uh, and we, as well as uh, some other companies, were disqualified in the uh, in the first runnings uh, on the basis that we were already selling the pattern commercially. Uh huh. Um, so, um, which so is they would, kind of sad. They would have but, wished um, for an exclusive pattern. Um, yeah. Well, there was there was some. Yeah, they 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 basically said that they wanted to have something which was uh, Unique, exclusively designed. Uniquely theirs. They've been uniquely designed for the military. Yeah. Um, although at the time that the uh, tender was first published, that information was not included. So anyway. Uh -huh. um, okay. Say lovey. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you yeah, win, you win some, you, you lose. You win some, you can't win them all. Exactly. Um, so, you know, and I think, I mean, obviously, whatever the U.S. Army does um, has a big influence yeah. on, uh, you know, the on the military, industry in on, general. Yeah, on the on the industry in general, and on you know, on this type of thing in particular. I mean, on, on the perception of camouflage, also, I think. Exactly, exactly. I mean, as 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 bad as universal camouflage was, there were still uh, a lot of uh, you know a lot of countries that that even you know adopted the digital universal camouflage pattern mm -hmm. uh, despite it obviously not working anyway um, so yeah that will have a big influence obviously and it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out okay so we're going to take a break and continue in a few minutes okay. Lawrence thank you all right uh, no we'll, we'll be back in a few minutes thank you
So we're back at High Definition's booth. Um, we would like to again thank you for your time. No, thank you. And um, what is your plan for European market? I, I think you're quite coming strong on European market. Mm -hmm. On the IWA, we've seen some companies, quite some actually, that are running your products, I mean your yeah. materials, yeah. with their uniforms, different cuts, different uh, types of webbing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So how do you view the European market for you? Yeah, I think you know the European market is, is very is a very important market for us. Um, obviously, our roots are European. The company yeah. started in you're the UK. You are UK based, right? Yeah, UK. The, the company is headquartered in the UK. I'm now uh, located over in the US, uh, running our US office. So you have a US office. So we have a US office oh, and a UK office. Yeah, we're uh, we're small, okay. but we're multinational. <laughs> That's the way to go, I think. Yeah, yeah. So uh, think local, act global. Exactly. Um, so yeah, the European market is very is a very important market for. Us. Um, it's been a very good market for us as yep. well. Um, as you pointed out, we have, uh, you know, we're here at the IWA for the first time exhibiting ourselves, and uh, at the same time, there are uh, we have four partner companies that are also showing Pencop products on their booths yep. here as well. Um, you know, uh, Helicon Tex right yep. across the hall here from us, uh, Leo Kulo, which has uh, mm -hmm. joined up with us just recently, Saber from JK Defense, yep. who have been a great customer for us for. Mm -hmm. uh, for you know, since the beginning, really. Yeah. Um, and then over in the uh, the other hall, we have uh, Uniforma with their Uf Pro line uh, oh, yeah. from Slovenia, Slovenian, com yeah. Slovenian yeah. company, making some very uh, innovative designs. Yeah. Um, and, and of course, also another really good partner for us is SOD Gear in mm -hmm. Italy, who uh, aren't exhibiting here at the show, mm -hmm. but uh, they've been another great, great, yeah, great we've customer. Yeah, seen their for products; they're yeah. pretty impressive. Very, very high end, very, very awesome products. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so the you know the European market is a, is a good market for mm -hmm. us, and it's an important market for us. And I think also our our range of patterns works very well for the yeah. European uh, European locations as yeah. well. Yeah, from uh, what I've seen, it looks good. Mm. Thank you. Do you have any plans to increase the or the number of patterns, or will you just work on these patterns to try to push them more and more? Well, we'll continue. Yeah, we'll continue to to con you know we'll continue to work on these with these patterns and push them more, um, you know, develop them across mm -hmm. additional fabrics. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, we have a hard shell uh, program mm -hmm. that we're working on, yeah. a soft shell program. Uh, we are also going to be rolling out um, a lightweight nylon material for uh, things like uh, shelter halves and bivy, mm -hmm. bivy sacks and mm -hmm. uh, you know, light light rain gear. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of thing. Um, so we'll be, you know, we'll be rolling those out with uh, with the different patterns printed on them as well. Um, we also have a an, a, a fifth pattern in development, mm -hmm. which is our uh, sort of urban uh, version uh -huh. of, of Pencott, uh, which I think will be quite exciting, uh, mm -hmm. and particularly for the airsoft market, perhaps with all of the uh, oh, yeah. CQB sites and so yeah. on. Um, so yeah, we've already had a lot of a lot of excitement about that that, op yeah. that option coming up. But I think from when you started in 2005, now it's 2013. Mm. Well, uh, the, the, sorry, the the company wasn't actually founded no, I mean, until uh, 2009. But yeah, Dom's developing. Yes, the, yes. I think the competition now is much stronger than it was back then when you first started. Yeah, there's there's a lot more competition now. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, I don't mean just with uh, military patterns, but also with commercially available yeah. patterns that some of are quite I mean, very good. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, although you know we've we've always been a, a quite a small operation, yeah. um, and have just grown organically without you know major investment, mm -hmm. uh, without you know without a lot of shareholders or anything like that, um, and it's grown really on the strength of you know the patterns of mm -hmm. people seeing it and seeing how effectively they work. Um, and of course, as that you know, as our reputation has spread, as our visibility has grown, um, then obviously other people have have come along as well, yeah. and offering also offering multiple patterns yeah. uh, developed to meet the requirements of specific environments. So, um, so yeah. So it means you know it, it competition is is, is stiffer. Um, means we have to uh, you know we have to stay keeps on our you toes. Your toes. Keeps yeah. us on our toes. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But again, I think you know as I said with the with the the rigor that was put into the development and yeah. creation of the pattern um, and the very analytical approach that we take mm -hmm. to expanding the, the pattern options, um, you know, I think that sets, I think that, that keeps us at the leading edge. Yeah. Um, you know, others, others may, you know, bring out additional patterns, but I think, you know, ours still have stood the test of time and continue yeah. to perform exceedingly well. Speaking of testing, can you tell me a bit more about how you test the products? Because from what I hear, a lot of companies do it, some do it very in-depth, some do it very shallow. Even the militaries have different methodology of yeah. testing it. Yeah. If you can share with our viewers, how do you, how do you approach this? Right. Um, well, again, we uh, we we try to be very thoughtful and analytical about it. Mm -hmm. um, as I was saying, you know, Dom Dom has been studying, collecting, working with camouflage for over 30 years. Um, myself as well for probably about the same amount of time. Um, very very interested in camouflage as well from a young age and, and collected all kinds of different patterns over the years and. And uh, and of course, also in the in the course of my um, in the course of running my blog, Strike Hold, or writing yeah. writing for the Airsoft magazines, and doing a lot of testing of, mm -hmm. of equipment and, and gear and clothing and camouflage patterns yeah. as well. So you know, we've we've built up quite a, a good uh, database of, of just knowledge amongst yeah. ourselves. Um, so we start, you know, with that inbuilt sort of hardwired knowledge. Yeah. Um, a good foundation. Yeah, a good, a good foundation. And then from there we go into looking into um, you know, what is the environment that this is intended to be used in? Uh, what are the features of that type of an environment? Mm -hmm. uh, what are the, the color analysis uh, for that type of environment? Um, and so then begins the process of boiling all of that down to coming up with some some design ideas, some pattern Solutions. design ideas, and then you know, and then and then you work those through. You test those. Uh, you know, you can do a lot of things with computer simulation. Yeah. Um, you can do some very low tech things as well. Even um, you know, like printing out samples of cloth or paper, and then putting those out in the environment and uh, you know, gauging the uh, the effectiveness. Of yeah. the, you know, the, the efficiency of them. Um, so there's a lot of different tools uh, at our disposal, and uh, you know, and, and we make full use of all of them. Um, we also follow the same protocols that the that the military use yeah. for testing uh, patterns. So as well. your tests have actually validity. Yes, yes. Um, you know, there is there is a NATO standard protocol, yeah. for example, on testing of camouflage. Mm -hmm. So that establishes things like uh, you know range to test the camouflage at mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the, one of the things that we've added on top of that is we actually test our patterns at much closer distances even than the military does yeah um, because uh, again a lot of a lot of the operational requirements for the kinds of people that we're yeah. uh, providing solution to they need something which is you know going to keep them concealed even at very close range yeah um, and uh, so that um, so that's something else that we do and is, uh, has worked out quite well for how is the airsoft community looking at your products? Because we know that the airsoft community all, always looks up to the military. Mm. Your milita your products, your camouflage patterns were not picked by the US military, so you, you don't have that, let's say, reference point. So how do the airsoft, how does the airsoft community look at this, accept this? Yeah. 
Um, I think a couple of things. Um, one is that uh, the, the patterns are actually being used by real, real deal military mm -hmm. units, um, special operations mm -hmm. primarily. Yeah. Um, you know, so so a lot of the you know some of the, the tier one units are actually working with the, with yeah. the patterns. Can you name one? Um, not really. Okay. Yeah, thoughts so. on just teasing. Uh, um, I mean, I, I, yeah, there's, there's one in particular that I know of that I, I yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I, well, you know, and of course, everyone has their own definition of well, what makes a tier one unit or a tier two or whatever. Um, yeah, but, but I mean, well, one, one unit which is very famous and is, it is public knowledge, is the Austrian uh, Einsatzkommando Cobra. Ah. Um, uh, that was uh, featured in uh, Commando magazine a few yeah. months ago, for example. Seen that one. Um, you know. They're 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 big users of the green zone mm -hmm. pattern and uh, very very fond of it. Um, just think it's brilliant. Um, there are a number of other SAK units mm -hmm. around uh, Germany and Austria and, and other parts of Europe that are that are also employing the patterns. Mm -hmm. um, over in the U.S., uh, as you might have seen, uh, former U.S. Navy SEAL Craig Sawyer, yeah. who's uh, meaning to uh, ask you about Craig's big big fan of the big fan of the patterns, um, and of course you know with his connection. Uh, you can probably work out that there are, you know, some some people that are um, uh, wearing uh, wearing a Badlands pattern in some uh, in some interesting places, for example. Um, so, so yeah, so the, the you know the patterns are out there, and and I think that's you know it's a, it's a great honor to be. Uh, you know, to be a part of that activity, yeah. um, and so for the airsoft community, you know, if, if they if they want to look to, you know, a particular sort of role model, as it were, or a, a, you know, a, a, an impression, a reenactment, a reenactment uh, sort of thing, you so know, they, they can, there is good grounds yeah. to, to start from. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think the other thing too is, and what we've what we've seen is there's been a lot of interest from the airsoft community is just from players who recognize the importance of. Exceptionally good camouflage, yeah. and uh, you know, want to have that. You know, want to employ that advantage. Want to get that edge. Want to get that edge exactly. Um, so uh, you know, so there's there's been a huge sort of backlog of demand yeah. for for the patterns amongst the airsoft yeah. community. Um, I mean, I, I'm a airsofter myself as yeah. well as, be, as having you, been in the army. You know that. <laughs> so um, you know, so I think that's you know that's kind of cool too. And I you know, I like being able to. Yeah, you know, to, to talk to airsofters, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing, you know, get, get their feedback. Yeah, get their get their feedback, and you know, just be part of the community, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and and have you know, make them feel welcome to uh, you know to to yeah. you know to work with us as well. Uh, we don't have any of the sort of you know snobbery about oh, if you're not real deal, we don't want to talk to you sort of thing. Yeah, you know? well, that's a good thing. Um, and I think, well, you know, and I think there's less and less of that these days. Yeah. Anyways, you know, companies are companies are starting to recognize the, yeah. the economic so importance of the well, airsoft absolutely. community, um, and especially here in Europe, it's a very big business. Um, so, um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's great. It's a great combination. Yeah, because we've seen your products in the past year from some high-end companies. Yeah, and now you've added Helicon, which should make the the products more affordable yeah. to the airsoft community because yeah, yeah. we all know that airsofters, there are airsofters who are willing to pay huge amounts of money for their gear, but most of the airsofters either cannot or will not afford the high end product. Yeah. So I think Helicon will be a nice addition to absolutely. that. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're thrilled to be working with them. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, and I think also, you know, it's, it's not just airsofters. I mean, everybody, everybody wants a, an economical solution. Oh, yeah. I mean, even in the, uh, you know, in the tactical industry as well, the tactical community, um, we have we have some developments over in, in North America that are that are going to be really exciting um, to address, you know, that that market yeah. as well. And and again, like you say, you know, there are there are some some units, some organizations that are willing yeah, to like pay smaller SWAT units uh, yeah. in the United States that don't have the big budgets, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know, uh, having a having different choices. So you're having the absolutely top tier, mm -hmm. exceptionally uh, you know, well engineered and, and uh, feature laden yeah, and built gear. and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, is, is is important, but it's also important to have a you know less expensive option yeah, for like a mid range solution. Yeah. 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 So um, 
besides targeting the military contracts, you now target the civilian market with help of, like you said, Craig Sawyer. Yeah. And we've seen some photo shoot with Dakota Meyer. Yeah. Uh, I believe they're both fans of your products. Yes. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. That was uh, that was through our friends at SOD Gear, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Craig and, and uh, Dakota, um, using the the SOD. Uh, uh, clothing, mm -hmm. um, and like I say, Craig is a, is a huge fan of the, of yeah. the patterns. Um, if you're not following him on Facebook, uh, I am, you should. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is to yeah. everybody else. Um, yeah, uh, you know, and again, what a what a great honor to have you know have yeah. some guys like that uh, you know promoting your product, endorse uh, your product, yeah. yeah. And um, you know, uh, it was just great how that came about too. You know, mm -hmm. it was actually actually uh, took us by surprise mm -hmm. uh, when when SOD had, had sorted that out. Said, yeah, look. That's just so um, that's just excellent. Yeah. yeah. So as far as uh, air softers are concerned, uh, do they have any special requirements uh, regarding the garments, the materials? Do they just go with whatever you have and it's acceptable for them? Well, I think um, sometimes air softers, we can be a very specific crowd of, of our demands and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, as, 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 is the, uh, as are the real deal operators yeah. too. So. <laughs> um, I um, well, if I of course would welcome any any feedback or input from the airsoft community as to any you know particular unique features that they would want to have. Yep. Uh, you know, we can pass those along to our manufacturing partners. But I think in general, the requirements are pretty much the same. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're you're looking for tactical clothing and tactical equipment. Uh, it's more, I think the requirements are more tailored to what is the particular role that you're mm -hmm. performing, yeah. and what are the, you know, the mission requirements. Yeah. Uh, if you're a sniper, obviously you have some unique requirements versus an assaulter. Yeah, well, you, uh, you've or, pro has or a, a very support, good solution you know, for that, we've seen. Yeah, or if you're a support gunner, you have different requirements yeah. from a or rifleman. Medic or, uh, yeah, yeah, so. Um, so yes, and I, you know, I think what we do is, um, you know, we, as I said, our, our primary focus is on is on the concealment side of things, yes. um, and um, so it's more about the environment where the where the equipment mm -hmm. or the, the clothing is going to be used, and whether there's a particular. Um, you know, pattern, yeah. the specific pattern requirement. Mm -hmm. uh, the the urban pattern is actually probably a, a pretty good example of that. You know, mm -hmm. when we started looking at developing an urban pattern, for a while we weren't even sure if we needed to yeah. or if we wanted to. Um, you know, there's there are lots and lots of different yeah. urban camouflage patterns yeah, out know. there, uh, most of which are really just a, a fashion pattern. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is that the urban environment is actually incredibly difficult to design a, a pattern for because it, yeah. it's different wherever you go. Yeah. Um, it's not the shapes, it's also the colors of the buildings and yeah. the, the surroundings. Yeah, exactly. So, so when we started looking at it and thinking about it, we sat back and thought, okay, where would you actually really need to be using an, a, a camouflage pattern? And, and in what way? In that type of environment, and in what way? Yeah. Exactly. So we spoke with we spoke with contacts in the law enforcement community and uh, you know the SAK units and so on, um, and you know got, got gathered their inputs like you know. Where do you see where where is the where is the need yeah. for a camouflage? What, what do you guys need? Yeah. When you go into an urban yeah. in, in an urban area or not? Yeah. And okay. so um, you know and so again getting that you know getting that sense for the actual operational requirement mm -hmm. and designing to that yeah. to that need as opposed to just saying okay oh, let's we'll try a, something we'll change a few colors yeah. and here you go um, now obviously an urban version of Pencot is going to look like Pencot with different colors yeah. so the first impression might be oh you just changed a few colors and, yeah. and here you go but the the process of, of deciding which colors to use yeah. you know, what sort of sequence it goes deeper not it's, it's not yeah. just like yeah. Yeah, there's a lot more to it uh, yeah. you know, than what meets the eye. Um, so, yeah, and, and so and where I was going there was the the airsoft community is mm -hmm. part was you know very much part of that equation um, because again um, you know looking at things like CQB the popularity yeah. of CQB sites and the, CQB skirmish darker areas or yeah. the around it, yeah. out Fibua yeah yeah so again thinking about it from the angle of okay so if I'm skirmishing in a you know in, a, in an indoor or underground CQB site you know what some features of that kind of an environment 
environment, mm -hmm. what is going to give me an edge tactically. Mm -hmm. um, so, or what's going to work against you? So, you or what's going to work against us? Exactly. Yeah. Avoid that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you know, obviously, if you're giving you're kicking in the front door, yeah. you, camouflage is irrelevant. Yeah. Um, you know, once you've gone loud, but it's it's the you know it's it's the process of getting up to that front mm -hmm. door is where yeah, you, where you where you're going to need some yeah. concealment. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. Lawrence, thank you for everything. My pleasure. Thank uh, you. Wish you all the best. Hope to see you next thank year on EVA. Definitely, and, uh, we will definitely be back again. Hope to get some uniform samples for testing. And uh, again, thank you very much. No problem. This was Air News from High Definition Booth from EVA 2013. Thank you. Thank you.